Okay guys, me and Cody have uh, finished sanding the face frame and pre-fitting. Had to make a couple little cuts and fine tuning on it, but we got it done. Uh, likewise with the with the top frame here and so now it's time to disassemble um, the prefit and go ahead and start gluing it up. It's one thing worth mentioning here we got this track in here uh, and that helps really to stabilize and make the uh, the, t the side of the cabinet really secure on this and makes it real sturdy this thing in and itself is solid oak and it's pretty heavy so I think it's going to be a pretty solid build when we get done I also put notches in here that kind of help seat everything correctly as far as the front of the side and also did a, just a little bit of a lip down here on the bottom toward all that all that fits together nicely so that's uh, that's what the reason for this is is to kind of help get everything tracked nicely and to also make it sturdy done here is I've taken some quick measurements of where the outlet or the waste drain the uh, gray water uh, outlet is for the wall and then also the hot and the cold hookups those measurements were taken from the wall to the center the centers of the valve and I took the uh, handles off of the valves. If you really wanted to do it right, you'd turn your water off outside. You would spin the valves off of the uh, pipe. And then you would just, you would take all your measurements and then cut your holes in the back of your cabinet and slide it in and then put those little um, covers, those little um, covers on the front there for beautification. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I've just taken it off to the point where I can get this around the valve. So these holes here in, uh, are going to be an inch and a half and this is going to be a two inch hole here. And um, one thing you want to pay particular attention is that if you're measuring 
from the wall this way making all your measurements this way over to your over to your plumbing and you're measuring up from the floor to your plumbing when you're measuring measuring this way from the wall when you go to measure from the cabinet you got to measure from the opposite side of the cabinet in what I had to do is I had to because this this part here is going to be on the wall side that I measured from because you're looking at it a mirror image of the back side of the cabinet in retrospect to your measurements so I had to measure everything over this way in order to get everything uh, right if I measured from here you know showing the same the same way as I measure measured from the wall then this would be over here and it would be wrong <laughs> So basically what you're doing is you're, is you're duplicating a mirror image. So uh, everything from the wall has to be measured from the opposite side of the cabinet. So when this goes back against the wall, everything should be in the right spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple hole saw and cut this in. for this to not tear out like it is cut a hole in part of the way through the plywood on the back and now I'm going to go come from the other side and finish the hole out and that way it avoids tear out and because I have a pilot hole on the hole saw this poke through the plywood and keep this part stabilized so where it finishes cutting through the uh, wood and so I just go around to the other side of the cabinet or the other side of the back panel poke this through and finish the cut with the cutter itself Now a lot of you might be saying, well how can you're going against the grain or opposite or perpendicular to the grain uh, when you're applying a finish? You know, a typical rule of thumb is that you paint with, with the grain, but uh, I'm going perpendicular to the grain. Now each one of these black lines is representative to a uh, weathered crack. And so I'm just going across the grain a little bit to hopefully penetrate those deep little uh, natural cracks. So that's why I'm brushing it on this way. But then on my final pass with the paintbrush or uh, this foam paintbrush here, I'll go just like what you're seeing now and I'll just go with the grain and that will be my final pass when I get done spreading the uh, polyurethane out. This one I'm putting on here polyurethane I don't have any special stains that I'm using and in my opinion it's turning out really nice uh, as far as the color is concerned it's just uh, bringing out that natural weathered distressed look and that's just what Mama Rain likes, so we aim to please Mama Rain. Here we have the knobs. Got a coat of finish on those, waiting for them to dry. And then we'll put another coat on there, because these are going to be handled the most, so we want good protection on, on the surface of these, uh, these knobs here. 
all of this material here I had on hand collected from some of the extra materials I had laying around of course as you've seen I made the knobs on the wood lathe and I probably even have some hinges laying around here someplace that I could use for this project Okay, now we're going to be putting the finishing touches on the, uh, the cabinet here now that I have it installed in the bathroom. I have it all plumbed in and it works as you can see we've been using it here a little bit. Um, I got backsplashes to put on, uh, the tow board to put on here, the doors to put on, and the uh, this little decorative piece that goes on the front here. I've cut a uh, a little piece of wood here, just a scrap piece of wood that's four and a quarter inches because I want the bottoms of the door to be level and square at four and a half inches. So if you've ever hung doors before, trying to hold the door in place can be somewhat of a headache. And then also trying to fasten it to the uh, cabinet uh, face. So um, I just got this little thing, uh, this little piece of wood here so I can hold the door at the proper height to in relationship to the floor so when I go to put on the uh, when I go to put the door on then that's just one last thing I have to focus on. Uh, another thing I've I've done the same thing to this uh, front here um, I got a, a little piece of wood that's inch and an eighth and it's going to hold it an inch and an eighth down from the actual counter top here, the face to the countertop, and then it'll hold it away from the uh, just in the right place as far as the it being square and the same distance all the way across. So when I go to fasten the door front here, it'll all I have to focus in focus on is the distance from the edge to the edge of here is the same as on the other side. When I go to put these on here I'm going to put those on with uh, contact cement and that will just adhere them to the wall. I just take and I put a just a, a light pencil mark across there and that way I know where to I know where to stop with my glue so with contact cement you put glue on both surfaces you put it on the wall and then you also put it on the back side of the laminate or in this case wood and you let the glue set up and get just tacky and then you go to put then you just glue it in place and you got to be real accurate when you put that when you adhere the two because once you put that on there it ain't coming off real easy. All I do with this is I put just that piece of wood up there it holds it at equal distance to part between this point and the top of the cabinet and just nail that in place. Then I can go go back and touch these up, and you'll never see any of these uh, little staples or just blind staples. You you probably just barely see them on the camera. Um, I can go in there. I can put filler in there, and just make those disappear. And I'll align the door directly underneath the corner of the last little faceboard here that I put up. 
Now see down here at the bottom, this little board is holding, holding the door square and at four and a quarter inches down to the floor. So that, that really helps me out. I could just hold this up with one hand and I can use something sharp to mark the center of where the screw goes for the hinge. Now with the marks that I had put on here, I'll just go ahead and pre-drill into this hard oak. So the, uh, I don't know what the diameter of this uh, drill bit is, but I just eyeballed it and seen it was, that it was just a little bit smaller than the threads on the, on the screw here, the wood screw. Uh, which is going to hold the hinge onto the face of the cabinet. Now I don't run that home or run it in tight until I get at least one other wood screw in the bottom. That way I can adjust it if I need to. Okay, now that I got the doors hung, what I want to do is I want to uh, put this little strip of wood in here back behind the doors and I'll mount it to this door right here and that way it'll act as a um, a style. I like this particular design because well, if you ever have to do any work on the inside of the cabinet well then you got this whole open space here and it's a lot easier to do your plumbing hookups or plumbing repairs. Okay I'm going to hold that off and a half inch or offset that a half an inch. I'll hold that in place with a couple of quick clamps. I'll open the door and just simply staple that in place. Okay, that's solid. The door shuts just perfectly. Okay, next what I want to do is I want to find out uh, the placement for, for the doorknobs here. One thing I wanted to point out uh, earlier is when I make these, I like to make these uh, concave a little bit. So if the very center of the knob is recessed in proportion to the outside of the knob, then the outside of the knob is going to make contact where the center of the knob is going to be recessed just a little bit and there's going to be a tiny gap in there. And so when I go to put a screw in there and tighten up the knob to the door face, well then this is going to be a nice tight fit on the outside portion of the door. So I want to figure out where I want to put the door knobs. And I thought right here looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll take a measurement from the top of the door down and let's say five and a quarter looks pretty good right there maybe five and a half I'll go for five and a half and I'll measure from five and a half inches down from the top of the door on the back side and drill a hole in here and back this way about let's say one and a half inches looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put a mark down on the back side of the door here. Five and a half inches down. And then an inch and a half in. Now I'll use my countersink bit and hit that at inch and a half by five and a half inches. Now I want to use a drill bit that is just a, either the same size or a tiny bit larger than the screws I'm going to be using to fasten the uh, knob to the door. Okay guys, now I'm going to put, mount the handles on the door and I have, um, you know, let's see how long is that screw. That's uh, an inch and a half long, 
um, brass screw that I had uh, laying around the shop there. I have it countersunk and now that screw can go right into the door freely and recess and then um, it protrudes through the door and it'll go right on to the pre-drilled hole on the door on the uh, door handle. All I have to do is hold on hold the door handle onto the door get it positioned where I want it and put that on there and it's nice and tight so I have plenty of penetration into the knob and it's really secure to the door it fits tight because of that uh, the little bit of a dip that I put in there Now I put this uh, panel up here, the uh, glue has gotten tacky, I remove the tape, press into place. And voila, we're finished. Now what I could do is I could go back behind here and take a, a little bit of clear silicone and just put a real fine bead around the contact or the intersecting points of where the cabinet meets the backsplash and seal that in. Now I'm really liking the, uh, it's an industrial grade sprayer this sprayer detaches so if you've got you want to sanitize the sink here and clean a lot of vegetables or potatoes or something like that you've taken most of the dirt off outside or whatever like that if you really wanted to process in here you could do that if Heidi wanted to she could dye some fabrics or whatever like that in here or hand wash so you have you have this regular faucet that turns back and forth this is in the off position right now I could turn this in the on position operate the sprayer I can lock the sprayer open right here and lock the sprayer open by flipping this down and across one handed I can leave that in the on position spraying that if that's to pull the handle it will drop, drop down and uh, it'll turn off automatically as it's spring loaded. So now with the faucet still on I can keep this regulated hot cold or somewhere in between and operate this handle. I can throttle it slow, have it open full, full speed. I can just have it down if you really want to save water you can have it down in a trickle like that and you can wash your hands that way and you can turn off the handle as you please and throttle with this little knob here and adjust the heat and cold the hot this way so you have lots of options with this little last uh, this uh, this setup here it's for more of an industrial application I mounted mounted it over here in this hole so we can still open and close our cabinet door here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe you got some tips and ideas on how to build your own. I think uh, the only cost I have in this, I had all of the materials here. I, of course, I had to buy the sink and I had to buy the faucet. But uh, everything else I had on hand, I had the hinges. I, I bought those in bulk there a while back. And so um, I didn't have to pay for those. I had the finish, I had the glue, and, you know, the equipment to, to do all this. Thanks for stopping by the shop. Take care and God bless.